Good evening guys and happy Tuesday to all of your sunshiny faces. Well guys, that surprise I told you guys about last Wednesday I think it was, I will share with you guys today because it was sort of what we were doing today I guess. Um, I told you guys me and my mom had to run an errand today and so we were gone um, at 11 o'clock. So we went and like I said we ran that errand and then we came back home. I ended up, I got editing done for today, uploaded, I also did dishes, I didn't do laundry, I didn't clean the bathroom. Um, so I'm going to do that tomorrow instead. But I ended up overall, I think, kind of getting to everything today, which was really awesome. Um, and then I, um, I just have to finish up my Meyer list. I completely forgot about it. <laughs> I finished like going over the coupons yesterday, um, but I forgot to actually write everything down. So I'm gonna real quick do that right before I go to bed tonight. Um, but I've stuck to my planner actually too so far lately, which is really awesome. But anyways, where we were actually headed to today was to the vet. Um, and it was not to take any of the dogs. It was to take our two little guinea pigs that we ended up rescuing from an animal shelter. Um, they were surrendered um, and so they had them at the shelter. They're about two years old um, is what they they said roughly at the shelter they most likely were and they think that they're probably very close to the same age so they were most likely um, possibly like litter mates um or you know siblings whatever <laughs> but um that they weren't like you know I mean they could have potentially been from like you know again two different like litters but um they were you know like I said probably around at least the same age um so and it's weird though because the one of them has got longer sort of fur than the other one um or its hair is a little bit longer it's doesn't we don't have like a long-haired guinea pig but it just has longer um fur so like i said that's why i don't know if that can happen in like a litter if you can have some that have like slightly longer hair and some that don't have as much um you know like it's shorter um like i said i don't really <laughs> i don't really know um but it's funny though because when we got our first guinea pig i actually had a guinea pig like book sort of but it was more like a magazine and it was like all about guinea pigs that was like one of those ones you can find at like like Petco or PetSmart or something like that and so um I had that and I actually really don't know what happened to it because I really do not think that I would have gotten rid of it and I don't like we clean the whole entire attic it's not up there unless I have it like in a bin under my bed but I don't think so either so like that I really don't know where it is I will share with you guys them in just a second um but we actually I told you guys how we lost Gigi um our guinea pig that we had fostered and then rescued um and that we had her um for about about two years a little over two years and she was close to probably about three plus years old when we got her um and so I believe guinea pigs only live normally between like five to seven years so um when she passed away she was like of old age at that point um and so uh like I was saying though it was just really tough and we were like you know we have this cage it's empty you know like we have I, I told you guys too how it was like literally the next day I was making soup I think or something like that and I was like I don't know what to do with the leftover like celery that like I was cutting up and stuff like that like I'd always cut extra and like give her pieces and stuff like that and it was just like I didn't know what to do with it and so um we you know were sort of like well you know if it's meant to be and we happen to come across you know because I told you guys we foster um we fostered obviously a guinea pig <laughs> we ended up adopting um and then we ended up you know we fostered several dogs um and so we were you know like oh if anything comes across you know if it's meant to be um so we were sort of looking around and so we kind of checked at the the animal shelter where we foster through and they I think didn't have any guinea pigs available but then um the one that's like closer to us actually they did have um they actually had two pairs um and so the one pair was in foster care like currently and the other ones were at the shelter and they were I think though the ones that we got were maybe a little bit younger or maybe they were older I'm not entirely sure but 
Um, the other thing was that actually while we were there, they had little, little baby guinea pigs. I've never seen them so small, guys. They're like the size of like a chicken nugget. Um, and so I, my mom's like, if we end up adopting one of those, we're going to name it Nugget. <laughs> um, but so while we were there, they weren't up for adoption yet. There was actually a lady that was fostering, I think, and fostered or, and or adopted. And then the guinea pig that she had, um, they didn't realize it was actually already pregnant. It ended up having um, a bunch of little piglets and um, they ended up, um, they were going to put them up for like adoption um, because I, she said she had like seven, I think, or something like that. Like she had a, like a whole room just for the guinea pigs, but, um, and she was like one of the regular like fosters for guinea pigs. However, like I said, she, you know, was like, okay, well, we're not going to keep all the babies and they'll probably go to, you know, good homes because they're so little and people really always want little baby guinea pigs. And so my mom was like, oh, should we get a little baby guinea pig? Cause then we'll have it for a lot longer. Um, and then I was like, honestly though, I just feel like these two, like I said, it was sort of meant to be like, these two are going to be at the shelter because everybody's gonna want the babies and so like you know when we go to you know like they go to adopt and they see like oh what they have available as far as like you know guinea pigs go or whatever they're gonna look past those you know the two that we ended up getting and look at the babies because like I said you know that's the same thing too senior dogs senior cats they don't get adopted as often as little puppies um you know and that kind of stuff so that's you know like that's kind of how I was looking at it too like they're full size now nobody's gonna be like oh how cute these little itty bitty baby guinea pigs like I said they they literally could fit in just your hand it was so tiny but like for that reason that's why when we were looking at them um you know we really felt like like that was kind of like it was meant to be knowing that like again too there'll be more guinea pigs that need homes as well and little babies that like I said will probably be adopted out faster um they you know will those ones will get homes and these ones might not so that's why we felt really really compelled to um adopt these two so we took them to the vet today kind of had like a thing like sort of required like that you set up like a first vet appointment through like the um shelter to have them like with an established vet um so that you can um you know if something comes up and you need to provide care or whatever you have one that has been seen by them already and it is really hard we tried with Gigi um, to find a, <laughs> guinea pigs are considered exotic pets. Um, they're not seen at most pets, um, you know, vets like dogs and cats are. Um, I would assume that probably any small rodent along with like any, um, you know, like possibly birds as well and stuff like that would be considered like exotic. Um, and so again, it was, it was really tough. We finally found one, um, with Gigi, but, um, it was really tough to <laughs> finally find somebody. And so they see all animals and actually the specific vet that we saw today sees dogs and cats as well. So we actually have appointments set up for the dogs as well because um the animal the the vet that we were going to we were taking them to they um ever since like covid um they don't do like um appointments anymore which is really weird they only do like first come first serve basis which my mom tried to bring charlie more than once to um i, I think maybe in bliss as well um tried to bring them more than once to the vets and you know like i and at the this time too I think now they'll let you into the lobby but before that they wouldn't even like let you into the lobby um you you have to stay in your car with your pet and I was like that's chaos and not only that you have no clue how long you're waiting like my mom was there for like four hours one time and she never got seen so um it was just like absolutely ridiculous so we were in the in the hunt for a new vet because of that um and this one they're super close they're actually also an emergency vet so if something were to happen and again to like bliss had that one um incident with eating the gum <laughs> we had to bring her to the emergency vet um you know like that kind of stuff they also already have records of our animals there which is also really convenient um and so like i said you know we're kind of in their system anyway so we're going to wind up again bringing 
the dogs over the next not this week we have nothing else scheduled <laughs> this week but then next week bravo and charlie have an appointment and then the following week bliss has an appointment so um and bravo and charlie are both on different days so like i said that'll it's over the next three weeks we've got three vet of Appointments. Well, I guess considering this, like today as well, was a total of the guinea pigs counted as two appointments. <laughs> There'll be five vet appointments in in <laughs> three weeks, but four different times that we'll be there. My mom's like, we're we're gonna be a regular here, <laughs> like because of all of the, um, you know, the the pets that we have <laughs> that we're gonna have to bring in. So, um. Anyways, like I was saying, I'll share with you guys though our little new guinea pigs. Um, but you know they they're the thing is is that because they were surrendered and I guess the owners didn't have a lot of time to spend with them was why they were surrendered. Um, they were not handled very much. Like um, so, <laughs> their names are Hans and Franz, um, which again too I felt like would definitely fit a little bit just because I told you guys how I've been learning German and um, so when. I heard that I was like oh my goodness that's like so cute and on top of that too is also the SNL skit as well um which is funny because everybody in the entire vet was just cracking up but we decided to keep their names um except the, the only thing is is that I think Hans was Franz and Franz was Hans we just sw switched them and flip-flopped them um and so like I said that that was the only difference we didn't end up changing their names though but my mom sort of has one she he has Hans and then I have the other one Franz who has a little bit longer fur like I was saying like his hair is a little longer um and then my mom's has a little bit shorter hair um but mine is uh he just doesn't move when you pick him up or you like even like touch him he just freezes he doesn't move um and my mom's he is more skittish though he's more prone to running away from you like when you try and pick him up out of the cage he likes to run and try and get away versus mine just freezes he just freaks out and then when you try and like feed him like with Gigi I could pick her up easily out of the cage she wouldn't really squirm or anything like that too much and then when you go to feed her like I give her a carrot and she just loved it and she just sit there in my arms and eat it and with mine he I finally got him to eat something out of my hand while I was holding him and um, my mom's has no problem he'll eat while he's being held he just doesn't like being like picked up or doesn't like being picked up out of his cage um if he's on the ground already like we have a playpen for them if he's on the ground already he doesn't mind being picked up but as far as like if he's in his cage in a safe space he doesn't like being taken out of there um but then like I said mine just like freezes he doesn't want to do anything so we've been working with them slowly and I think they're getting a lot more comfortable with us and again too it hasn't even been really a full week yet but um already we like I said have definitely seen an improvement with them um, as far as you know like I said the, just about a week and handling them and all that kind of stuff so um, you know that's good but again too they were just probably like never picked up out of their cage prior to um, you know like or with their previous owners and so um, like I said it's gonna take a lot of handling um, versus like with Gigi she I never had a guinea pig like her that just loved people like when you come over to the cage she would come up to you and wanted to be pet and she wanted to be taken out of her cage she would cr try and crawl out of her cage when you opened the like, thing like if you were just like going to like fill up her food bowl or something like that she wanted to come out like she didn't want to be in her cage if you were there like she'd rather you be being held and being picked up by you and so I like whoever her owner was before definitely had like <laughs> definitely handled her a lot and she loved people um, and like I said to these two that we have now just they need a lot of extra a lot of extra care and a lot of extra work and so um, like I said we're doing that with them but it's already like I said within about a week we're already starting to see some improvements which is really awesome so anyways though let me real quick share with you guys a little bit of the guinea pigs all right guys so this is Hans this is my mom's and you guys can see he's skittish um, we also put in here they had an igloo house but it was too small for the both of them so we actually the step stool fits perfectly in here so we ended up putting that in here like I said this one is Hans and he'll probably get scared and freak out as soon as I try and put my hand in here and back here this is Franz 
um, who I don't know if you guys can see real well, um, but he has got more of a, like, um, kind of orangey, um, brown on him versus, um, Franz is, uh, or I'm sorry, Hans is, uh, completely just white and black and Franz, he is white, black and like that brown kind of color. So again, yeah, they're, they're both scared. Like he'll let you pet him though, but he just gets very skittish, especially when he knows he's going to be picked up. And then this guy back here, he is just again, frozen as soon as you come near the cage. <laughs> He gets, like I said, just completely freaked out. He doesn't want to move from in there. But, um, yeah, those are the two guinea pigs. So, I'll try and share with you guys, um, like, you know, maybe when I take one of them out or something like that. Because it's kind of hard to see in there. But, they love that little stool. And it's, like I said, the perfect, perfect height for them in there. Um, and we're thinking of making, like, some type of little ramp kind of thing. So, that they can actually walk up. Because mine, every once in a while, he actually tries to climb up there. And he can't because he <laughs> is too big and will not. Um, but, at the same time, he's, like, too small. Like, he's not, he can't reach up there. Um. But I think he also weighs too much to try and like hoist himself up <laughs> on top of it. Um, which is funny though because mine looks bigger than my mom's. But today when we were at the vet, um, hers actually weighed more. Like so Hans weighed more than Franz. Um, but anyways, like I said, they're super, super cute. And we've been loving having them. And they kind of, again, make like not having Gigi a little bit easier um like i said we you know we're just hoping like if something ended up coming along you know like if there was you know guinea pigs that needed a home and those ones like i said were just sitting in the the you know shelter and they weren't in a foster and you know all that kind of stuff they were the only two we kind of again we felt really compelled to um bring them in to our home and you know again too we had like all the food <laughs> we just you know like i said it wasn't even you know like two weeks ago um that she ended up passing away and we had you know like bedding we had the cage we had all that stuff so it wasn't like we need to go out and buy anything else um but you know it just it felt very empty like i miss hearing their little squeaks and stuff like that which is funny though because Gigi was also very very vocal if she actually heard if my parents could originally they were in my parents room if um the door was open and she could hear you go into the fridge she would start like squealing because she knew that um hopefully you were bringing her treats also too almost every single time you opened up the door she would also start squealing because she knew that hopefully somebody was coming to bring her treats and even if you weren't she'd let you know what she wanted um and so they are not very vocal though they don't squeal very much like you know um like she did and so like i said she was she was so sweet but um you know it makes missing her a little bit easier having hans and franz <laughs> so anyways guys i'm gonna take a shower and get to bed i will see you guys all in tomorrow's vlog if you guys did enjoy today's make sure you guys give a big old thumbs up if you guys are new we'd love it if you'd subscribe and i'll see y'all very soon shiny faces tomorrow so bye guys